This is Southern Cross News with Rachel Williams. Good evening, thanks for joining us. The protection of children in out-of-home care dominated Parliament again today. The mudslinging match so fierce, the Speaker suspended question time. The Human Services Minister survived a no-confidence motion and despite a barrage of criticism about her handling of the portfolio, the Government is adamant Jackie Petruzma's position is safe. A battle playing out during question time ending with the House being suspended after a tirade from the opposition. Using taxpayers' money to the out-of-home care sector... I suspend watching... the House until the ringing of the bell. Words slung across the chamber by those who think Jackie Petrusma isn't up to the job. Minister, how can your judgement be so wrong that you are prepared to defend, defend foster children being advertised on a buy and sell page? each and every day, yeah, Madam yeah, Speaker, yeah. that they indulge in yeah. grubby politics. The circus continuing when a no-confidence motion was moved against the Minister on the basis of what Labor said was a detailed litany of failure within the child protection portfolio. But the motion didn't pass, with the government remaining firm, passing the blame back to Labor. We are making progress. We are trying to fix a system that was broken. Uh, we're trying to to focus on what's important here, the kids at risk. But we've been astounded and shocked and even dismayed by the alarming lack of answers uh, that the Minister has provided to us. Well, I will say very strongly on behalf children? of all my colleagues, and I believe all fair-minded Tasmanians, that we have every confidence in the Minister for yeah. Human yeah. Yeah. The Premier confirming there is no longer a contract between the government and Safe Pathways, as the organisation is still under investigation. The contract for out-of-home care is now with another provider. There are workers under Labor contracts, um, Labor hire contracts, are working for Oak Possibility, um, an entirely different organisation. The Children's Commissioner acknowledging the importance of discussion around the system, but warning that care needs to be taken to respect the children. Meanwhile, large numbers of frontline Taswater employees have walked off the job today, following major concerns of mass job losses in the company. The Treasurer is still powering ahead with the government takeover plan. My message to those that want to criticise is that, you, is that you can remain a part of the problem or you can become a part of the solution. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Meanwhile, Labor leader Bill Shorten has backed Brian Green as the person to lead the Tasmanian Labor Party to the next state election. According to a recent EMRS poll, only 20% of Tasmanians would prefer him as Premier compared to 52% who'd rather Will Hodgman. National tourism... Brian Green believes in employing apprentices and buying Australian made, cracking down on foreign visa workers who are being exploited. My money's on Brian Green to stand up for Tasmanians' cost of living and job issues. Mr Shorten was in Tasmania to tour the Norsky Skoog paper plant just outside New Norfolk as news broke that the nation's jobless rate has risen to 5.9%, the highest it's been in more than a year. We're at 1.8 million plus of our fellow Australians who either can find no work or insufficient work and this is a problem and we need to have a plan for jobs. Positive news though for Tasmania, our unemployment rate fell to 5.8% in line with the national average. A man who pleaded guilty to robbing a Sandy Bay pharmacy has had his sentencing adjourned while the court considers the psychological impact on victims. Wielding a knife, Benjamin Robert Joseph demanded medication from the Magnet Court Pharmacy before fleeing on foot. The Launceston Supreme Court heard one victim claims to have developed a post-traumatic stress disorder following the incident in October last year. Joseph has been remanded in custody. He will reappear on March 27. The son of a prominent West Tamer local government figure is defending allegations he defrauded his late father of more than $100,000. Andrew Eric Roach fronted the Launceston Supreme Court today for day two of his trial. He's accused of leaving his father, Trevor Roach, without enough money to cover future living expenses while acting as power of attorney since 2012. Trevor Roach served as West Tamer Mayor in the late 90s and was President of Bowles, Tasmania. The trial continues tomorrow. 
A stunning bright blue glow in Tasmanian waters is making headlines across the country and it's not just in the state's northwest where beachgoers are enjoying the sight. Launceston's Jacob Collings captured this spectacular vision at Georgetown's jetty late on Tuesday night. He says it's the second time he's witnessed the bioluminescence event after seeing it in Hobart last year. Every time I see it, it's just the most breathtaking thing. I'm just glad a lot of people are able to resonate with it. And um, that's what I love doing, I love sharing. So to see other people like get amped and want to go traveling and like go down to Tasmania and see this thing, like I'm just like, great. I'm happy that I was able to open you up to this. Scientists say the glow is from a single-celled plant-like organism. It's believed the flashing occurs when it's disturbed to scare off predators. Experts expect the organisms to move south in the next few weeks. It might be one of the Launceston Football Club's last hitouts before the season begins, but tomorrow night's Legends game is more about banter than ball skills. The inaugural clash will see the club's senior side take on retired players under lights at Windsor Park. It's only two weeks until round one of the TSL, but players are eager to jump on board. Yeah, they were. It was. Uh, I reckon we play on the sad day as well against Bracknell, so there was a few guys that I had to be a little bit careful of, but they were all throwing their hand up to get out there on the park. Yeah, a little bit nervous, not so much on the on the competition, making sure the body gets through. That's probably the uh, the, the hardest thing for the the team behind me. Although the Launceston seniors are favourites, the Legends team has made a handy pickup. Former North Melbourne midfielder Nick Del Santo will lace up his boots for the side. Hundreds of Tasmanian school children are joining in a conversation about art. They're being inspired by the Glover, Pl Glover Prize exhibition and learning about the changing concept of landscape pa painting. In what would have been his 250th year of birth, it's clear landscape artist John Glover's legacy lives on. These college students learning there is no end to what classifies as art. I love it. There's a huge diversity. Like, there's some really realistic ones and then some really abstract ones. And, um, yeah, lots of different mediums used. The Glover Arts in Education program that's been running all week aims to inspire our next generation of artists. Those running the workshops encourage students to look at what they normally wouldn't like. It's often in those moments of works that, that are a bit edgy, that are a bit uncomfortable, that are a bit strange, that you can actually get engaged in something that's, that's more than your personal taste, that can teach you about life. I'd love to get inspired, I'd love to get a lot of ideas, see what's really possible for me to do. The $40,000 Glover Prize has already been awarded to Raymond Arnold, but the public can vote for the People's and Children's Choice Awards until Sunday. The younger people are often a bit more, a bit braver. The exhibition is open to the public again on the weekend. Monika Dadson at Southern Cross News. And now to look at the day's other business and finance news with thanks to Tazplan, your local super fund. The share market has surrendered most of its early gains in the wake of disappointing jobs figures. The ASX 200 index has risen by 11.8 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 76.88 US cents and 109.9 New Zealand cents. Now to some breaking local footy news now and Tigers TSL coach Scott Matheson has been sacked by the club just over two weeks out from the start of the season. It's understood Matheson has been stood down after failing to meet club expectations. The former Devils player was appointed in October, taking the reins from Adam Henley. It's believed Development League coach Aaron Vince is the frontrunner to take over the role. Tasmania's bowlers have impressed on day one of its final round shield clash with South Australia, with debutant Gabe Bell taking three wickets. With Ferguson and Weatherald gone, Hamish Kingston combined with Tim Payne to remove Travis Head. Jake Lehman made a 25-run stand but became Rainbird's first victim before Payne got involved again with a stunning piece of glove work to remove the threatening Dalton. Cooper and many also fell cheaply. South Australia all out in its first dig for 225. Tasmania got off to a poor start with Chad Sayers removing Caleb Jewell with the fourth delivery of the innings. Rain delayed the start of play this morning with today's final session wrapping up just a short time ago. The Hobart Chargers women's team has locked down its second import for season 2017. American point guard Cassie Cook will join the team, lining up alongside Kathleen Shear and replacing Chelsea Schwears. It's about getting the right person and the right fit for the group in, um, 
in terms of personality and leadership and that type of thing. Uh, position was obviously a want but not necessarily um, what we were married to. The team also has a third major recruit lined up Looking, from interstate. Uh, we're in talks with, with a couple of other players to fill the third spot essentially, so an unrestricted Australian. Um, so we should hopefully have an announcement for that before the first game. Siebel action gets underway next Saturday night when all four Tasmanian teams kick off their season at the Doohan Entertainment Centre. Hobart boxer Luke Jackson has added another skill to his repertoire following another intense training camp in Sydney. The hometown hero looking to utilise some newfound power when he takes to the ring in Hobart on Saturday nights. He's known as one of boxing's marathon men, using fitness and work rate to grind down his opponents. But Luke Jackson is done with simply outlasting his foes. He wants to outmuscle them too. And I want people to see a different side of me. They've seen me box, um, you know, two 10-round fights now. They know I can box. And the first fight I had here, I've got to stop it. So I want another knockout. That's the takeaway from his latest Sydney training camp with master trainer Billy Hussein. He'll put that newfound power into action this Saturday night at City Hall when he bumps fists with African Mohamed Kambruta. I've worked on taking some risks and um, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take some risks in the fight. I'm gonna be smart obviously, but I'm gonna I'm willing to take a little bit to get the knockout. As always, Jackson's supremely confident of adding the W. He insists he has bigger fish to fry, though. It's a bout with former sparring partner Joel Branca he really wants, and one that could happen pending results over the coming days. Uh, look, we'll, we'll just wait and see what happens after the weekend, but that's the fight that we want, and um, hopefully we can make it happen. Um, he's fighting tomorrow night. If he gets the win, I get the win, maybe we can make the fight happen. But look, I'm ready for anyone and everyone, whatever. Jackson and Camberuta will contest Saturday night's main event in Hobart. There's six other fights on the card though, all professional bouts featuring the cream of Tasmanian boxing. All Tasmanians, you know, from Devonport to Launceston to Hobart, you know, so it's a full statewide card, which is it's great that you know, everyone's getting seen to um, fight on the big stage. Saturday night will also see a Tasmanian title contested for the first time in 40 years. Chris Rowbottom, Southern Cross News. Good evening. Hobart 25 degrees today, 7 behind yesterday's maximum. Launceston, Burnie and Devonport 23. The top 26 at Fingal and Friendly Beaches. Some good drops of rain too over the west overnight. Mount Reed 20 mils and Queenstown 16. Today, Meander recorded 16 millimetres, Strathbridge 10 millimetres and Hummocky Hills 9. Flinders Island, St Helens and Bushy Park 24 degrees. Wynyard 23, King Island, Low Head 21 degrees. Strawn 20 and Liaweenie 17. The cloud band moved over Tasmania and Victoria today, while a large area of cloud associated with thunderstorms sits just off the coast of New South Wales and south-east Queensland, more over the top end. Now here's the picture of today's movement across the state, the rain fairly short-lived. Tomorrow a high pressure ridge moves over our region, extending ridges along the east coast and over the bite. The monsoonal trough sits along the far north, a cold front approaches WA. Winds Southwest to southerly at 10 to 20 knots, reaching 30 knots over the east early. Winds in the north will tend easterly, but more variable over other waters. Strong wind warning current from St Helens Point to Tasman Island. And the sun is back. 20 for Hobart, 22 for Huonville and Campania. Sunny also for Launceston, 23 the maximum, 20 for Devonport and Georgetown. Sunny for Burnie, a top of 20, 22 for Strawn, not 20 as well I should say, not 22, and Wynyard sunny and 20 as well. And for St Helens, sunny and 19 degrees, 19 for Swansea, Port Arthur, 19 too. There's the UV, sevens and eights across the state. On Saturday, fine and mostly sunny apart from late drizzle over the northwest. Some morning drizzle over the north on Sunday, but fine for most of the state for most of the day. Showers on Monday, mainly over the west and north in the afternoon. Mostly sunny in Perth tomorrow, along with Adelaide and Melbourne. A windy day in Sydney with the showers continuing. A possible storm for Brisbane and Darwin. Partly cloudy conditions at the moment, 20 degrees in Hobart, Launceston 21 and 20 right now in Devonport. Very important day on the Murphy calendar tomorrow, Rachel. It's the one day of the year that I've forced myself to drink green beer. St Patrick's Day, is it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for that, Murph. We'll go and check the calendars. That's all your news for now. I'll be back later with updates if I can work out what I'm doing. Thanks for joining us. Good night.